the best aspect of these two PS5 cooling fans is that they are simply incompetent. They're not both incompetent and malicious. And so the hardest part of this review was just determining, is it fair to call these a scam? So we're going to go with basically a scam, but lacking one key element, which is malice. Instead, they're just sort of stupid. So this is a PS5 cooling base. We've tested these thermally. We've still got our thermocouples wired up to the PS5. So we ran very controlled tests for all of this, including acoustics, which are absolutely terrible on especially this one, acoustics and thermals. And uh, the, the level of design and aptitude is mind boggling. So this one blows air up and into basically a solid base. We'll show that in a minute. And this one is actually even worse. So this on the packaging shows cool air comes in, indicated by a blue arrow, of course. That means the air is cold. And it uh, comes into the fans and goes into the back of the console. Well, let's take a look at a few things. This is the back of the console. So that's the cooling device. The fans are, in fact, positioned to pull air in that way and push it that way. And you attach it to the back. This, that's where the exhaust comes out. That's, that's not where intake goes. So we're reviewing these today. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Corsair 4000D Airflow case. We recently reviewed the Corsair 4000D Airflow as a return to high performance cases by Corsair, but also talked about its attention to detail on color matching the individual components of the case. The 4000D Airflow is marketed as an affordable, performance focused chassis with ease of installation features like refined cable management routing and pathways. Learn more about the Corsair 4000D Airflow at the link in the description below. So these fans are from a pop-up company on Amazon called KJH. I bought this one for about $18, $19. And I bought, I actually bought two of them actually, because that was listed under a different brand, but it's the same exact product, the same packaging. And it also says KJH on it, but different brand on Amazon. Then we bought this one. This thing was $40 for the, it's, it's not, it's not $40 of stuff. So that's what you get. Nice. Well, I would say that was worth the forty dollars. But this is uh, this this is a piece of plastic that goes here for the digital edition. So there's that. So this has got two fans here. You can see that uh, since we're looking at the cable side and the back of the hub, the air is going to be coming up, but doesn't really have anywhere to get the air from. So the bottom is mostly blocked off by plastic. But the the real problem is not this. The real problem is that you mount the bottom of the PS5 on top of those two fans. And let's get this plate off. The real problem, as I was saying, is where does the air go? Nobody knows. It goes to the same place thermal takes air goes in its original Tower 100 design, which is some sort of extra dimensional cube inside of a back of a holding somewhere. So there's a couple holes down here and uh, not a whole, there's a little bit of hot air comes out of here once again, the wrong direction, but otherwise you can't really cool much that way. So this thing sits like this in the stand and we do have, again, we'll get to thermal testing and acoustics in a moment. They're fun, uh, not because it's good. It's got two controller chargers on the side. I'm afraid to test them. Uh, and then there's a button on the front that can toggle the fan right there. There's your toggle. And additionally, it has game storage. And if you look here, it can store games like The Witcher 3 and NBA, but we've blurred them out. We haven't done that. They've done it on the box. They've blurred them out because, well, we'd assume they weren't allowed to put those there. There's one key area though. I went through the whole testing process of this, determined that it was bad, determined that the other one actually makes the thermal significantly worse because it's blowing air into the exhaust. But the one thing that I, uh, I overlooked, and as a reviewer, I should be ashamed, is that although everywhere it indicates cold air going into the device via blue arrows directed into the device, on the packaging, in fact, it says the following, included two cooling fans, 3,000 RPN. We're going to move on. With power button, it can quickly and effectively heat the P5 game console. So, review over. I got it wrong. It is actually a PlayStation 5 heating device, even though it's called a cooling fan.
on the box and on the Amazon page, it says it's a cooling fan to cool down the console. Uh, it is, in fact, as, as listed in the fine print, a heating device. Let's take a look at some of the other marketing language on this. So it's born for games. It's patented. We tried looking it up on the USPTO and we couldn't find it. Doesn't mean it's not there, but we couldn't find it. I'll point out that everywhere it says P5 instead of PS5, which is an intentional decision. And let's read the warnings too. So usual choking hazard warning also says, don't place into hot water, moisture, or direct sunshine. Uh, don't throw drop or apply strong shock to product. Don't put any heavy objects on it. Don't clean it with organic substance and don't modify it and dismantle it. Well, we're not going to modify it. Uh, and because that does say it's, it's an and, it's not an or, so we can dismantle it. They didn't, oh, come on. They didn't peel off the thing that goes on top of the adhesive all the way. So I shouldn't be able to pull that off by hand either, but well, all right, I guess that's nice. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lot of electronics. No wonder it's $40. So, okay, so there's our fans. Let's just go ahead and pull one of these out. God, this is so insane. This is one of the worst products I've ever intentionally paid for. Okay, so we've blacked out the label. Well, we'll measure the RPM in a moment, but the way this works is pretty simple. You've heard of Three pin fans, you've heard of four pin fans. This one is a two pin fan. So it's got five volts and ground. That's all you need for a fan these days. Uh, just plug it into USB right there. There's your five volt right on the USB pin out. So five volts and ground means it's just gonna be running at basically 100% all the time. And, uh, and they're gonna be loud and annoying. And in our testing, we'll show that. The charging is done by these two, two tiny things, which also just connect five volt ground. And then this is for the other USB on the front and for the switch to turn the fans on and off. That should probably be in the off position always, but ideally you just don't have one of these. Let's look at the other one and then we'll get into some of the numbers I ran, which are really fun. Here's one that is pre-disassembled that I did earlier. So it's got, uh, this is the switch, to turn the fan on and off. And you can see an enormous amount of plastic here that even if these were pointed the right direction, is a huge obstruction to performance. And also, let's take a look at this. If you point them in the right direction, this is still creating more of more impedance to airflow than it's going to accelerate by slapping fans on the back. The one thing they did okay here, and I will actually give credit for this, is they found a good way to secure this to the back of the PlayStation. There's not a lot of places you can put a fan or a third party accessory on this box. Your best options are replace the panels or add some USB device somewhere. So they've actually done well here where it snaps into the grill. Full credit for that. Unfortunately, uh, the fans are facing the wrong direction. And this one doesn't, unlike the other one, say that it will heat the device. So, so this one doesn't have that cover. Air comes into the PS5 over here. We have like Schlier and Imaging photography showing this. So the air comes in over here through a blower fan which is right there. And that blower fan pulls the air in this way, goes through a bunch of fins, and then it comes out that way. Most of the air exhausts between here and here with very little coming out up here, very little coming out up here. We showed this in our previous photography video. But the single biggest mistake that I just, I can't get over is the fact that they're pointed the wrong direction. Don't know how that happens. Uh, as for how it's assembled, they come apart like this. The fans are not screwed in. Uh, and they mount like that. So it just goes on the rails. There's three different size fans. These measure at a pretty high RPM. So uh, let's just go ahead and validate that now with some of our testing tools. Okay, so we'll get to the thermal testing in a second. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And you can hear the wonder of the fans.
So even though I was holding the mic next to it, that that's really loud. I can still hear it now. It's far louder than any console is natively. And we do have acoustic testing for it in a standardized test suite, but uh, this is over 10 dB louder than the, the PS5 normally. You'll see that in our testing later. What I'd like to do though is RPM test. So here's this. Oh yeah, by the way, this is held in like that. <laughs> they press fit it. And by press fit, I mean they pushed the USB connector through the hole and then hoped that it would fit. Okay, I've already put uh, reflective tape on these fans. This is the largest, should be the slowest. Remember this advertises like a three or 4,000 RP N. So I need to get that dot to be kind of as small as we can since the fan's so large. Or I mean, since the fan is so small. It's reading about 4,600. So that's about 4,600 RPM. There's only one speed on this. That's the speed. That's the largest of the fans. Let's get the one that is the deadliest to my fingers. <laughs> Try to not have any insurance claims today. Nature of incident. Tiny cooling fan. Chopped off finger. <laughs> So that one's about 8,400 RPM. Now, to be fair, I don't know what the conversion is from RPM to RPN. Maybe they're using metric revolutions per minute. Uh, we use imperial revolutions. We use imperial minutes here in America, so I'm not sure what that conversion is. And then if we check the smallest one, so that one's about 9,000 RPM. Now I'm going to plug this one in and do a quick check on these. This one's intended to plug into the front of the console. Not that it doesn't matter, but and then we need the power button. Okay. Oh wait, I need a sticker. I like their uh, I like their use of negative space here. Really give everything room to breathe. Hot glue, very crafty, but not in that. Not on all the spots just you know here and there they oh they're saving money on screws did you take those out no okay cool so they're passing the savings on to you presumably what do these leds signify it's, oh it's indicator okay indicator okay well that's it that's that seems like 40 dollars well spent thanks Okay, Patrick came by and gave his inspection on it. He said, and I quote, it all checks out. So uh, let's do an RPM test. It's about 2,900 RPM. All right, well, I've seen enough here. So let's go back to our thermal testing and acoustics, and then we'll, we'll talk about if it's worth it or not. We'll start with the SOC thermal since it's the most egregious change. Here the stock result was 70 degrees for the SOC backside and 74 for the SOC bottom measurement. The KJH rear fan was really impressive, mostly in that its incompetence has reached heights previously reserved only for special GPUs. The design runs the temperature a staggering 10 degrees higher on the middle measurement on the SOC, and it's similar at the bottom measurement. Had there been even a minor belief in this product, we've now negated it. The rear fan worsens performance in every way you'd expect. It not only provides passive resistance for the existing fan to exhaust air by attaching a plastic assemblage to the exhaust, it also provides active resistance by literally actively blowing air into the exhaust. It can't be understated how genuinely stupid this design is. The KJH UN hot fan, the base one, doesn't make things worse, so it's, it's not as bad as the rear attached one, but it also doesn't benefit anything. It does nothing, in other words, aside from maybe providing a cheap housing to loosely hold your wobbly PlayStation 5 disc carriers. Time to move on to memory thermals. The stock result with this latest test pass had us at 93 degrees Celsius, still far warmer than we'd like to see for this hotspot measurement, with the KJH rear fan actually making this worse as well. Moving along, the KJH UN hot fan base ran at 92.2 degrees, which is within our error and run-to-run -run variance for testing. 
In other words, despite being arranged technically higher on the chart, it's actually about the same as the stock measurement. It's not surprising, seeing as it barely moves any air to begin with. We also tested noise levels on the rear-mounted fan because of how truly abysmal the fan is for noise. Not only does the product produce a similar high-pitched siren-like screeching sound to that of Console Wars comment sections, it also makes the PS5's internal fan ramp harder and produce more of its own hum. The noise levels are insane. It spins up fast and it hits a high-pitched whine almost instantly. This chart starts us at power on, so you don't even see the ramp because our measurement interval was set to two seconds here and it ramps to 100% load and under that time or 100% speed. That's because there's no tack line, there's no PWM, there's, it's just five volts and ground. The PlayStation 5's base noise level in our test environment is about 30 to 34 decibels, often at about 32, while this is hitting 46 to 48 constantly. Decibels are logarithmic. That's not a linear increase, it's a logarithmic one. So it's louder than most GPU fans. It's louder than EVGA's two X299 VRM fans, both of which spin at 10,000 RPM. This is one of the worst products we've ever tested. It doesn't do anything it claims to do. Not one single thing, but it makes just general existence near the device measurably worse, while also worsening the temperatures, the thing that it's trying to fix. This is a terrible design. That seems secure and not hazardous. Oh, the light has gone off. It's no longer charging. Red light. Oh, wait, it went off again. Hang on. Oh, the whole thing turned off. So the conclusion then. Technically, this isn't a scam. Uh, scams, by my definition, have to be malicious. This is just really stupid. So you shouldn't buy this. It, it, it doesn't, they blow the air the wrong way, both of them, and they make it worse. Or in the best case, not better. So uh, these don't do anything. PlayStation 5 cooling mods are definitely going to be a hot topic because, I mean, it always is. Console cooling devices are always popular for aftermarket mods. But in this instance, they don't actually do anything. So my recommendation would be, Look at the device yourself, look at the photos of it, and just see if the fans are pointing the right way. And about 300 or so Amazon reviews, assuming the page is still up, at the time that I bought the, the smaller one, were four stars or five stars. So not sure if those are paid for or people who just feel like it's better. And so then they said that it makes it cooler without any objective evidence whatsoever. But hopefully they're fake reviews because that would give me more faith in humanity. So that's it for this one. Don't buy these. They're bad and uh, they're a waste of money, but I had fun with them. So let us know in the comments below if you see any other interesting cooling mods. There might be some out there that actually work. Uh, presumably the best bet for a PlayStation would be to put holes somewhere near the blower fan so that it actually has somewhere it can pull extra air in from but uh, we'll keep an eye out. Otherwise, link us below if you have things you want us to, to benchmark next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out directly, get products in return, or get behind the scenes footage, and to also help us afford to buy more things like this. We'll see you all next time.